everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and it's time for another edition in our 101 series where we explain technical things in plain English. And today we're going to be taking a look at the media server called Plex. And this is a, a free piece of software that's available for uh, computers as well as a number of network attached storage devices that is a really robust and simple to use once you set it up a media player that will stream all of your media files to uh, most of your devices, whether they're on your network or somewhere else. It is really, really slick, and we're going to kind of go through it uh, right now. So we're going to head over to uh, Plex.tv first, because I figured it would be good to show you exactly uh, what it is and then show you how to get it working. So uh, when you go to Plex.tv, you can download the media server. There's a bunch of different versions available, so you can download it for your computer, uh, as well as a number of network-attached storage devices from Synology, Netgear, QNAP, uh, Drobo, Unraid, Asus Store, Theca, Seagate now uh, on their uh, personal media uh, device, the personal cloud. Uh, so there's a lot of options there. Uh, it is free for most of what you're going to see here. And uh, you'll see that I'm already logged in and I can click on launch here. And what this will do is actually connect to all of my uh, media servers that I have operating. Right now I just have one on my uh, Plex account, which is my little media server downstairs. And what I can do is click on, uh, for example, movies and see all the Blu-ray files that I have stored on that computer. So what I do when I buy a movie is I, I don't even use it in a, a Blu-ray player. I just grab that, that disc. Uh, rip it onto a network attached storage device and then access it either directly via DLNA from my WD MyCloud or uh, use a mobile device and have Plex serve as the intermediary for playing that file back. And what's nice about it is that once you load all those files into a directory, uh, you'll see here that you get uh, some really nice artwork that Plex actually goes and downloads. It looks at your file, knows what it is, and automatically does all of this cool stuff with the thumbnails and the title and the length and everything else. Uh, it does it all for you, which is really, really cool. Now, what's neat about this is that I could click on uh, Argo or any one of these movies and play them back uh, on my computer right now, or I can go right to my phone here and log into my Plex account. You can see I have all of those files there too. So I can click on Argo, for example, here, and it'll start playing that movie file uh, right over my local Wi-Fi right now. But if I wasn't at home, uh, it would also work on uh, the internet too in the same way. So this is kind of the power that Plex has is that uh, your media, it, where, the, where you are located really doesn't make much of a difference uh, when you're trying to play things back. It will always work uh, no matter where you are. And uh, you can even go a step further and, for example, like a Roku player, you could you know, set up your, your Plex account on the Roku player. You could be you know, halfway across the world and you can play back movie files on that Roku player just like you would if you were at home. Now, Plex is free if you're just going back and forth to a computer with a web browser, but if you want to use uh, some other features, for example, like being able to sync those files up with your uh, tablet or phone so you can play them offline on a plane or something like that, uh, you do have to go step up to the premium version, which will cost you anywhere from five bucks a, a month uh, to $40 a year or a lifetime subscription for $150 uh, that does give you access to, to the apps that run on the clients. Uh, so the iPhone app and a few of the others do cost a couple of bucks, but if you are on the premium uh, Plex Pass tier, uh, all of those apps are available to you free of charge, but you can buy the apps and still use the free version of the software uh, without having to incur any monthly or yearly fees. So let's talk about how all this stuff works. So there are two components to playing back media via Plex. The first is the server. That's the computer uh, or the network attached storage device where your media files are being stored and organized and transmitted. And then you have a client and a client can be anything from an iPhone to a Roku box to a game console uh, to a computer as you saw uh, at the outset of the video here. And the Plex server, whether it's running on the network attached storage device or the computer, uh, is smart enough to know how to make the video work on the target device that you're getting to. So you don't have to think about you know, having a movie in five or six different formats to play it back on whatever device you wish to send it to. The Plex server is smart enough to know how to make all this stuff work. It's magic. I don't know how it does it all uh, you know, so quickly, but it does do it. Uh, but there are some caveats to be aware of, especially when you're running with network attached storage. So there's a bunch of clients though that are available across just about every platform that you can think of. And that's one of the other things that I love about Plex is that it works across the board on everything and it has all the same conventions. So you saw just how you know, close to the uh, web version the iPhone app looks. So if you go on your Roku box, plug it in anywhere in the world plug and hit the button, you'll see uh, all of your media very easy and accessible across the board. And of course, you've got that offsite access where that Plex server, again, is smart enough to know how to get that media out over the internet and then over to your device, wherever it may be. And it's just absolute magic how it works. Uh, and you can even share media with friends. So your two Plex servers at your different homes can uh, get connected to each other and to your clients so you can play back stuff that 
your friend might have stored on their computer at home too within certain legal restrictions of course uh, for copyright and whatnot so those are uh, some pretty important things to learn so the magic that I've been talking about is something called transcoding and that is what uh, makes Plex so powerful is that it does again all the thinking for you as far as what it needs to do to get something to play back uh, on your target device and I want to explain exactly why this is important and why you might want to have a little bit more of a powerful Plex server beyond just a network attached storage device uh, to serve your media files so a good example is the blu-ray mkv you saw of uh, argo there was uh, running at about 20 to 40 megabits per second in its native format so that blu-ray disc i basically took the movie from the disc and copied it to my uh, network attached storage device that my plex server is connecting to and i can play that speed of a file 20 to 40 megabits per second uh, over my internal network no problem but if i'm off-site i don't have that kind of upstream speed to support a file that is that uh, intense so the best I can do is 10 megabits upstream from my home uh, to the internet so you need to have some way to get that file smaller and that's what the Plex server will do there's something called a transcoder that's built into the software on that server and what it's going to do is take that 20 to 40 megabit file and can make it as small as something like 1 to 2 megabits per second or less uh, so that I can stream it out over the internet and then get it uh, over to the devices that are connecting to my Plex server on the other end and it is really nice again about this is that you don't have to think about it you can just hit play on the target device and Plex kind of knows what to do with it and if you're a techie and you really want to start tweaking all the different settings you can do that uh, but generally the automatic function is pretty much going to be all you need uh, as long as that computer has enough power to serve that file uh, you'll get it working now another thing you can do with this is do format conversions on the fly as well so my HD home run that I use as a DVR in the house it records onto the uh, computer at M with an MPEG-2 formatted video which is not really compatible with a bulk of the things that I would play it back on including a web browser or the Roku box or a bunch of other stuff so uh, what the uh, Plex server will do in addition to making the file perhaps smaller is convert the format from MPEG-2 which is unreadable by a lot of my devices into MPEG-4 which is what all of these devices use and again it'll do that on the fly automatically and it just knows what it needs to do to get your files to work and, and that's really what makes uh, Plex so powerful. Now there is a problem though in that uh, the DRM files that you'll buy from the iTunes store or from Google Play or Amazon are not compatible with this because uh, those files have copy protections that only work with the software or app uh, that Google, Amazon, or Apple, or whoever you bought it from uh, has provided to you. So there are some uh, limitations with that. So anything you download from the iTunes store is just not going to play uh, over your uh, Plex server. But uh, things that you might go out to the store and buy via like a Blu-ray disc or a DVD might actually work. So again, uh, all these different formats, you're not going to get it over to your Plex server. But uh, if you were to go out and buy a Blu-ray or a DVD movie and use uh, some software, one is called M Make MKV, which is what I use to get my uh, Blu-ray files onto my server, uh, or another little program called Handbrake, which will work great with DVDs. Uh, you can then, uh, in this example here, connect to a network attached storage device uh, and then have that device connect to the Plex server, which will then do the transcoding and get it over to your devices. And what's nice about doing this method is that uh, you're basically taking the copy protection away so you have the freedom uh, to do what you want with the media that you've paid for. And I think it's a very liberating thing uh, to be able to do that. And I would recommend that's really the way to go if you really want to own the media that uh, you're going to be playing back by the discs for disc versions as long as they're still available uh, so you don't have these restrictions that prevent you from playing back your media where you want to play it back i want to show you how i have my uh, setup configured so you can see how you can connect your plex server uh, to a storage device that might be somewhere else on your network so what we're going to do now is add a new media folder to my plex server and what's cool about what we're going to do here uh, is connect my plex server uh, to a network attached storage device so in this instance the server is a computer uh, but the computer is going to grab files from the network attached storage device to serve out to the internet so i'm not storing these files on my computer they're being stored on the wd my cloud that is on the network uh, but the computer is going to do all the work on those files when they get streamed out and i think that's the ideal way uh, to use a network attached storage device uh, with the Plex server. So have the Plex server on a more powerful computer and use the NAS device, network attached storage device, as storage. And that works great. Um, in fact, uh, all the videos you ever see me play on the channel are being streamed through a network attached storage device over the network. So what I'm going to do here is just uh, add a home video uh, library here. So I'm going to click that and we're going to call it home videos. That should be fine. And I'm going to add a folder. And what I'm going to do is just uh, put in 
uh, the uh, network address for my WD MyCloud on my local network. So you can map a drive letter to your network drive or you can just connect to it uh, this way. I'm going to actually add one more folder in here. Uh, and sometimes it's easiest to go with your public folders that don't have any password protection on them on your local network just so, just so that the uh, Plex server doesn't have to log into those devices every time. I'm going to click on Add Library and as you can see it's already finding uh, the files that are living on that server. So we have one of my YouTube videos here. I've got a video that I shot with my phone. I can go ahead now and, and actually play that file back uh, over my uh, local network with the web browser but I could also uh, grab that same file over the web too. So we see how quickly it is to get uh, files added to your to your server and get them uh, streaming right off the bat and it will uh, you can configure it to update those directories automatically so every time you add a new file to uh, the, the hard drive the network attached storage device it'll automatically add it to your Plex server on uh, some kind of interval. So that is our quick look at Plex and I hope it answered some of your questions about uh, what Plex is and how it works. It is probably the simplest thing to get working especially if you want uh, to play media back on just about any device and not have to think about it. It will uh, do all of that thinking and converting uh, for you pretty much in real time but I really want to emphasize the importance of having a computer be the server, especially if you're doing a lot of the transcoding to get uh, those big files squished down into something smaller because network attached storage devices are good for storage, but they're not so great at video processing. And you really probably want to look at something running with an i3 processor or better uh, to get the best results out of it. But uh, as you saw, it really does a nice job when you do have the processing power behind it and you can still use the network attached storage device as storage. Uh, and then have the computer do all the processing and it can connect uh, to that network attached storage device through the Plex server, do all the indexing and the file serving and everything else you will do with Plex. So if I, I just would love to hear your feedback as to whether or not this answered your questions and made sense. Uh, so definitely leave some comments or questions below and I will uh, either make a follow-up video or maybe trash this thing all together and start over again. I'd really like to hear from you uh, how I'm doing on these 101s. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.